Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of 100 Kubernetes Tools. And today is a special episode because I'm joined uh, by John Ryan from VMware, who's going to show us how you can use YTT to stop forking your Helm charts. Yeah, so um, I guess my first question is, what's wrong with forking Helm charts? I mean, a lot of us are doing it. So, I mean, from the perspective of a maintainer, it's a bit of a pain because we'll go on more like release a new Robusta version and we get something out there. And then um, I say to users, okay, go and upgrade and like there's this feature you want in there. And then they say, okay, well, I can't do that because mm -hmm. I forked the Helm chart and now I need to go and then you reconcile those changes. And then I always say to them, well, what did you go and fork the Helm chart for? Like, what did you need to do that for? And then it turns out they had to add something that we're not exposing in the Helm chart. Let's say they wanted to add on um, an HTTP variable that uh, you add as an environment variable so that you can like access the internet through a proxy. And something that we never thought of exposing, or we wouldn't have thought of exposing if they hadn't asked us for it. So then we can go and we can add on stuff like that to the Helm chart. We do that, of course. Like the Helm chart keeps on, feels like it keeps on growing over time and keeps on getting all this extra complexity. And then yeah. in our yeah. conversation a little bit before this, you were saying how maybe that's like the area where you really need to like YTT. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, part of the challenge there is that it's a question of who owns that, uh, the, the results there of that Helm chart. So you're maintaining it. So in a really real sense, you own that piece. And, but then your user has like these legit needs and so they, they want to own this, this edit. And I think the challenge there is that they manually applied that edit. Even if it's something that's captured in like a, a Git repo, it's a textual patch. Um, and what you really need is like a logical patch. Um, so that's part of where uh, YTT does come into play because that's one of the, the big pieces, big selling points for YTT is that it does both templating and patching in the patching piece we call it an overlay. Okay, so maybe let's take a concrete example. So we were speaking a little bit about the runner in Robusta before the call. Do you want to share right. your screen and then open up maybe the example of um, the Helm template for that? And then we can see how you would take some specific functionality there and how there's actually yeah. a different way of doing it that doesn't involve the Helm chart. Yeah, okay, exactly. So um, I think it kind of starts with like those values. So the piece that we were talking about before was the runner. So if I kind of scroll down in the uh, in the values to find that, where's that? Uh, there we go. And so these are basically this is your like configuration API, if you will, to use. This is what you're presenting to them. So there's a bunch of knobs and switches. That's one piece. The other part is in the actual template as well. So the corresponding template here for runner is right here. So here's deployment. And it's like for every piece that you have set up here. You've got to have that corresponding templating in here, and so we, yeah. we have a pod, we have a pod right that's the robust runner and that's running in your cluster mm -hmm. that's in the deployment mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. And then if you go back to the Helm, go back to the Helm values for a second. So maybe like yeah, really really concrete. So okay. let's say here on nine two hundred and eighteen, that's the memory request, right? right? And then the only way that like I'm familiar with or was familiar with really, that I think most people are familiar with is to say like, okay, I want to, I want these values that come from the user to impact the memory request, like in this mm -hmm. pod that I'm pulling in from the Helm chart. So now I have to add something to my templates. Like now there's going to be a place in my template where you pull in that variable that we're looking at right now and you say, put that like value right here, right? Exactly, exactly. So that, that corresponds somewhere down in here. Let's see, secrets, resources, right. Okay, so there you go. So. So yeah, so what's going to happen is over time, you're going to basically, in in the large, you'll end up mirroring the Kubernetes API in your values over time. As you get more and more and more requests, these things are going to start to look an awful lot like more like um, Kubernetes API. So let's uh, say so this is going to be more complicated. Like let's say tomorrow, for whatever reason, someone went to come along, and um, I think there are GPU requests now, right? And they said, okay, like I want to have a GPU request. And I'd have to update my template over here. And then I'd have to go back to the values file and expose that knob. And then if someone, if I wasn't exposing that knob, then what someone would probably do is they probably take my Helm chart and fork it and put it by them. And then that also goes back to the upgrade problem. Is, am, am I getting this right? That's it. That's exactly it. I mean, th th there's another, there's one tiny other piece, and that is that 
uh, with each of those requests, this thing starts growing and growing. So when you have new customers come and a new user come and look at this, they're staring at a wall of configuration as opposed to like the 80% set that uh, they would just, here, this is what you need to do to get started. Uh, they have to like make sure that they understand um, what they can ignore and what they need to use. So, so yeah, they're all of this. Looking, they're, they're essentially looking at the Kubernetes API, right? Like everything that's useful in the Kubernetes API, I have in my YAML and then someone eventually wants to add it. So all my values are just the Kubernetes API. Yeah, and we're saying, we're saying Helm here a lot. I, I, I want to say, like, I have a ton of respect for the project we got here from five years ago because of them. Um, we have a package manager because of them. There's a lot, like, Kubernetes is happening in big part because the Helm project exists and they've done what they've done. So this is about, like, templating as a challenge. I'm not uh, not bagging on Helm. <laughs> so you but, said to me, when, when we first started speaking about this video, right, yeah. and I said to you, are we speaking about replacing Helm or are we speaking about, like, using YTT together with Helm? And you said to me, I think that you can, you do see people often like using one or the other, but more frequently you see people using them both together. Yeah, in, in, in most shops, like the, the tool that people have already reached for is Helm when they're trying to figure out how to like get manifests from uh, uh, third parties. And, and that's what folks have been working to use to do some of the internal stuff. So I think that that's where it begins is Hey, it's it's Helm right now in terms of managing um, those templates and manifests. Okay, but so, but I think you can you can evolve that by bringing in initially bringing in that YTT overlay component to be able to in the post render like Helm has this feature where you can say after I've rendered out my stuff I can shell out to another tool you can put YTT right in there and you can have your overlays your customer can run your overlay their overlays on top of your chart. Okay, so that's maybe, can we work through an example of this? Like, let's say tomorrow someone comes to me and they say, okay, like, Robusta is great or Robusta is shit because you don't have GPU requests, right? Mm, mm. Now, like, if I'm just using Helm, then they open up an issue on GitHub and then I have to go and I, like, update my Helm chart. So somewhere in the template, there's now a GPU request. How would I do it without, how would I shift that burden from me as the maintainer of a Helm chart to the user who, who would otherwise go and fork it? Yeah, they would write an overlay. So can they you show me that? Yeah, yeah. So let's talk through that together. Um, so I got my editor up here. Uh, so basically, all they would need to do is write um, this logical patch. Uh, so let's see. So this would be on what a deployment? That's I, yeah. Right, OK. So we're going to be in there. And so we're talking to some container. This is on the runner? Yeah, this is on the right? runner. OK, so this is going to be on this one. Wait, so... what you're doing right now is you're essentially taking my Helm chart, and then you're like applying a patch to it? That's what. That's exactly what's happening. And this patch happens after the, like, the rest of the Helm chart is done. Yeah, yeah. So you'll say Helm template, or, or however you invoke Helm. But there's a, there's a command line flag post render. And you can give any executable, really. But you could use YTT at this moment, and so Helm will wait until it's rendered all of its t all of the manifests, and right before it goes to apply it to the cluster, you can you can run this. Okay, cool. And then wait, yeah. the, oh, sorry, one more question. The person would be maintaining yeah. this then, and the person would be writing this, like say, add this GPU request. Again, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's even a thing, but to add, the person would be using like adding the GPU request there would not be me a project like the what. The customer would put in their Git repo is just the patch, and then they will pull in my upstream Helm chart without any modifications. That's it. So That's then when exactly it comes it. time to upgrade, then they just pull in a newer version of the Helm chart, but they can still apply their patch. And, and then, and because this is, itself. yeah, because this is a logical patch, that's a really important piece here. Is that we're going to basically say only apply this, uh, you know, to this deployment, like this. Uh, it needs to look like this. Um, only apply this to the deployment and only apply it to this container within that deployment. And now everything that we put under here is just going to get merged in, just logically applied uh, to this piece. So I don't know where the GPU stuff would be. Would that, that's under requests? I, don't, I, I think there is some concept like that, but I don't, I've never dealt with it hands on. So what we're going to do here yeah. is like 
Some some okay. gonna be watching this video and saying you like who, who is like, that? You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you're right. Okay. I don't. <laughs> um, I have to do one thing up here. And one second. Pull this over. Okay. Um, I need to pull in my overlay. Oh, come here, buddy. Overlay library. Great. And that's it. This is literally the whole thing. And so this shows me structurally like what changed, like down to what spot is it going to change? And from here on in, it just merges in um, uh, on top of that. So yeah, so then I save this, this goes in uh, in my Git. And like you said, when, when, it, when it goes to get rendered, it's just Helm, whatever command you're using, post render, run this, and all the other patches that you need, and they'll all just get applied. OK, so can I make your life a little difficult? <laughs> Go for it. OK, so that's a. Users do user things, right? Like they always do what's unanticipated. So let's say mm -hmm. someone now says, I want to like not put in there just like the GPU as 250. I want to take mm -hmm. like the GPU that's coming from the user and then I don't know, multiply it by a thousand because they're providing in like micro units, micro units or whatever it needs to be in macro units. Like, so can in Helm, then I can run code. Like I'm not just applying a patch. And how am I going right. to run like, I have functions, I have other stuff. So what do I do if I want to do like more complicated stuff here? Yeah, that's the other thing that's really nice about um, about this. Let me, uh, I don't want that. Um, is that, uh, yeah, you can, you can use all the same templating techniques within the patch. So if you want this to be a variable, then, uh, Let's just keep it simple. Uh -huh. It's just a single variable there. And now, no, but do something tricky with it. I, I want to see you run. I, I'm, I'm biased. Oh, right, right, right. That's right. You were saying YTT. I want to see you. What's going in YTT is really Python code, right? It's, um, it's, yeah, it's a Python dialect called Starlark. Yeah, but it's a it's a subset of Python that is Hermetic. So you can't reach out to the outside world, uh, and the point is so that it could be deterministic. So, um, so you always do get something. Do, do something really like I, I want you to do an example though that shows the power of that. And again, like I'm cheating because I do know a little bit more because I actually looked at this in advance. But okay, yeah, yeah. no worries. So you can put right. in any Python code that you want here, and right. then you could. You could essentially take any Python code and just embed it inside your Helm chart and then apply whatever you want on that. Sorry, not your Helm chart, inside your YTT overlay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could I could full on just start writing, like like if I have a complex function that's that's going to be hard to read in line, I could say, you know, calculate uh, GPU and have a whole bunch of variables in here uh, and then just call that function in here as well and it could do the formatting. So yeah, so like, but once once we go into this space, now you're inside your your Starlark language. So okay, yeah, cool. You could do kind of whatever you can think of. So I think we're going we're going a little bit over time. So I just want to start wrapping up a little bit. Yeah. I um, mean, I think the obvious question also is like, okay, so we, in terms of overlays and stuff, right? And there's also customize out there. And mm -hmm. I guess you just answered that question with the example with the Python code, but in one sentence. What's the or in what cases do you want to use something like customize, which is another system out there that has overlays and does this sort of thing? And when do you want to use um, YTT instead? Yeah, that's a great question. Like customize is fantastic because it understands that it is patching on Kubernetes manifests. So there's some great just out of the box ads or, or edits that you can do, like renaming things or uh, adding namespaces to stuff. Those are great. That like that stuff's fantastic. So if the kinds of things that you're doing are those anticipatable edits, and actually you get some mileage out of customize uh, quite a bit, um, then that's a great tool for the job. When you start getting into things where you're getting into um, very specific kinds of edits that have like those kinds of calculations or um, uh, that get outside the realm of uh, customizes ability to pinpoint where the edit should go, um, that you start to hit some limits. Um, and at that point, it can be really valuable to have something that is not so worried that it's Kubernetes 
YAML, but that it's just YAML in general. And that's the one big difference there with YTT is that uh, it's designed to edit any kind of YAML. Um, and so I, th I think it's when you hit a certain level of, of complexity, it starts to really shine because you're not, it'll scale at that moment. Uh, you're, not, you're not taking on any additional language functions in order to tackle that additional complexity. Um, so, so, yeah. If, so essentially if like customized in Helm got married and had a child, and the child could do what both of the parents could do with them, but could also do them together, could do any part of that, then that would be YTT? Um, so it's, it, it, yeah, I, sorry, this is a little pedantic answer, but like Helm, Helm does so much more than templating. Helm like applies a manif your manifest to your cluster. It does a lot. Um, but if we just focus in on Helm template plus customize, then logically that's very close. The, the one big difference here though, is that Helm does not understand itself that it's dealing with YAML. It's templating is textual. So Wait, you have to you have to explain that. I know what, exactly what you're referring to because I've hit that so many times. I yeah. think anyone who's written the Helm chart has. But just yeah. like, what's the symptom of that? Like, where do people say like, oh my gosh, why why doesn't Helm get this right it's, by itself? Yeah, it's kind of here. I'll share my screen again, kind of point at it instead of just hand waving. Like it's all these little things where I need to pay attention to the fact that I'm inside of a YAML file. I have to to YAML this value. I've got to indent it. So it it's there's nothing wrong with that per se, but it's it's bookkeeping. It's sort of like, um, you know, memory management in modern programming languages. It'd be great if I didn't would, didn't have to worry about freeing memory. Give me garbage collector, and then I could just focus more on writing the program and not less on memory management. I I don't want to have to think about what do I need to do to make this valid YAML in my templates? I want them to automatically do that. And with YTT, the, the, the templating, all of this is happening within the YAML structure. It understands and operates on YAML, not just text. Cool. That's really cool. Okay. okay so to just summarize this up, the next time someone comes to me and says, I want to add on like this extra value to the Helm chart, I want to do this. Then if it's a common use case, we're going to, of course, go and add that. But I can also give them a quick solution that doesn't involve patching or forking the Helm chart, which is just mm -hmm. to go and do an overlay with YTT. Is that right? That's right. Say, look up that post render flag, grab grab yourself uh, some YAML, uh, some some overlay, and then you can write that patch yourself. And you can do it now. You don't have to wait for my release and all the process that I need to go through to get this. You can fix this right now. And you can upgrade to Robusta better and more easily the next time without having to suddenly uh, merge those two different Helm charts. You could largely automate that at that point. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, John, it's been a pleasure. Any other comments before we finish? Um, no, I think this has been um, a good treatment of like how we can take something that's painful today and make it a little bit better. Thank you. All right. Take care. Cheers.